And right now we're still waiting to hear from the Michigan Supreme Court on the ruling of two ballot proposals. One is about abortion. The other is about promote the vote, which changes the process to allow early voting and more absentee voting. Seven Action News reporter Jim Kurtzner is live outside a polling place in Dearborn and has been talking with voters today. Jim, on abortion, this has to go to the court because of that split vote with the State Board of Canvassers last week. That's right, Glenn, okay. and we could get a, a ruling from the court any minute now. I'm continuing to watch my email. This issue was driven by petitions signed by some 730,000 registered voters in the state of Michigan. That was almost double what was needed, but then it went to the Board of Can Canvassers last week. Two Democrats, two Republicans on that board, the two Democrats voting to put it on the ballot. The two Republicans said no because some of the printing on the paperwork lacked spacing. The words were all put together. The Republicans called it gibberish. So whatever the court rules will be final. There will be no court hearing. Whatever they rule will be what happens with this in November. We did talk with voters out here this afternoon, sort of did our own unofficial poll. And some saying, while they don't necessarily support abortion, they say this one overwhelmingly should be decided by the people. I think that it was politically motivated for them to deny the uh, will of, uh, what was it, eight, seven or 800,000 people. It's a woman's right. I'm not really for abortion when they use it, just get pregnant and have an abortion. Why or why not? Yes, you sure. Why? Uh, female had a right to choose what they want to do. Whether you want to have an abortion or not. Well, Jim, proposal one on the ballot that was passed through the legislature, but not a petition drive. So it would do two things. It would change the term limits for people elected to the legislature and require financial disclosures. Who would be required to comply? Yeah, this one's already locked in, and this applies to the governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, attorney general, any of their top appointees and people running for the legislature. Uh, two states in the union do not have this, Idaho and Michigan. They would have to comply if this passes, passes in November by voters. For the last 30 years, term limits for elected officials have been three two-year terms in the House, two four-year terms in the Senate. 14 years total with prop one that could change to 12 years and make it either chamber there would also be those new financial disclosure requirements idaho and michigan are the only states now that don't require these financial should be uh voted upon to me some of them have been in office too long Looking at promote the vote, Jim, it would make voting easier if the state passed that. That would appear to be a good thing, but what is the feeling among voters? Well, again, this one was held up by the Board of Canvassers last week, again with a split vote, two in favor of putting it on the ballot from the Democrats, two Republicans saying no. The voters out here believe that should be decided by the voters and it would bring about big changes similar to what we saw implemented by the Secretary of State in the 2020 election. If on the ballot and approved in November, future elections would be vastly different. There would be nine days in person early voting. Military and overseas ballots sent in would be counted if received by election day. State funded absentee ballot drop boxes would be set up and postage paid by the state to mail in absentee ballots. Voters could apply for absentee ballots once for all elections. All right, Jim. Well, thank you for keeping us updated. We appreciate your insight there. No, we're still watching. We'll let you know when we get the word.